Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to a new video here on the channel. So, this is a requested video from a lot of people. When I posted this video, I had a lot of questions on how I color graded this image and all that. So, today's video is going to be about color grading this image, and I'll particularly talk about how I see colors and how you should also see colors on your own. So, before I get into today's video, kindly subscribe if you have not. If you're new here, thank you for joining in. Thank you for coming to learn something new on my channel. And you can also suggest this page or this channel to somebody else to also come and learn from me. And don't forget to leave a comment down below at the end of this video to let me know your concerns about whatever it is that I said that you did not get. And I will get right back to you. So let's just get to what we have to do today. Um, I mean, I used Lightroom to shoot. Sorry, I used Lightroom to color grade this image and I sent it to Photoshop to, for further retouch it. Then I came back to Lightroom again to export it. So this particular image, um, in as much as Capture One is best for a lot of things, sometimes it's way too much for me and I want to make some subtle changes. So Lightroom was the best solution for me and with color grading i always tell people that color grading is more of um, a personal preference what you want to see in the image and what you don't want to see in the image sometimes i also tell people that it's best to have a reference color like a reference picture you're color grading from have a reference picture you look at and try and mimic whatever you see in that reference picture then you end up getting colors um looking the way you wanted them to look in the image you are color grading and with color grading too it depends on the mood you shot the picture in. and by the mood i mean the weather conditions you shot the picture in. is it a studio picture is it an outdoor picture if it's an outdoor picture was it cloudy was it sunny was it dark was it um, um getting colder and all that so it depends on exactly what um what and how the image was shot in so this image i did a bts i'll leave a suggest card up here and i'll leave a link down in the description below go check out the bts of this video how this image came about so i shot this with my canon um 5d mark 4 no the canon 6d sorry the canon 6d the 85 sigma at 1.4 at ISO 200 f 2.0 and a shutter speed of 1 over 500 so looking at this image from the left here you can see that before it looks way different from what you guys saw on the page right so this is how I perceived the colors when I was shooting this image even before I got to the location I had already been here to shoot for a fashion brand before for a friend and I was like, okay, whenever I get a chance to come and do a swimwear shoot over here, I know the colors I will be going in for. A dark, subtle tone colors with more of a cinematic grid feel to give the images I will create over here um, a very great looking cinematic grid, right? So I had in mind that I was going to shoot using the sun. But unfortunately, when we got to all on the day of the shoot, it, it, it just came out cloudy all of a sudden and i'm not saying it's bad cloudy conditions overall if i should say cloudy i want to put it in the right way overcast conditions are way best to shoot in because you get a very big soft box so all the light was even and if you want to check whether an image was shot with an overcast or like natural light always check the forehead of whatever model you shot you realize the light is spread or over rather than it's been a specular light on the forehead so when i zoomed you guys realize the image was quite blurry right the face um the sharpness is actually on the hand than the face i i have been saying this for quite some time no matter what you do whatever image you shoot if you think it's very great and you didn't even get it right in camera if it's blurry please keep the image and add greens to the image and it will come out very very nice like nobody i don't think um before you realize it was blurry it's after i zoomed in then you realize it was blurry so back to color grading the greens and the yellows were like popping way too much for me right i didn't want it to look this way so i kept on saying to myself that okay if i should get back to post processing i'm going to add some blues into my greens make them look a little bit um, desaturated and keep my yellows into more of reddish green vibe right so 
I moved it from this end because of the outfits, because of the bikinis she was wearing, um, the brown bikini and the blue outfit. I don't normally like shooting blue and green together. Um, it always doesn't go well for me. But the whole point is I had more skin, which was more brown and the bikini, which was also brown. And with brown substances or brown colors, um, if you know your colors well, I would advise you go learn your color theory. And by color theory, I mean the complementary colors, the analogous colors, the triad colors, and you get to see what color complements the other very well. What color is the opposite of another color and how best you can combine the two to create beautiful coloring um, for your image. So with greens, the, um, what I what I know or what I have learned so far is that when you complement um, green with brown, it works very well. So I had this idea that I wanted to change this whole looking image from the camera when I shot it to make it look like this. So let me just get into what the settings I used so that I, I will vividly show you exactly what I did, but I will advise you not to do the same thing because the weather conditions under which I shot will, might be different from what you shot and you might probably end up getting something different and maybe it will be another model with different colors so if this was to be in white i know the colors i would have in mind right so don't don't copy blindly i don't mind showing you exactly what i did but i would advise you don't copy blindly understand the whole color theory and try as much as possible to color grade the images the way you want them to look like how you perceive colors so that's the best way to explain color grading to anybody you can't teach somebody color grading you can let them know how they would want to perceive their colors so i warmed the image up so if i should reset all this um this is how the image looks let me turn off um this is how the image looks right um, let me send it back to what you saw it to be so i changed the profile from adobe color to adobe standard i wanted to use camera standard but camera standard was too strong for me so i ended up using adobe standard then like i said um making the image look warmer was my goal so i increased the warmth the temperature and i added some magenta tint because the whole image is full of greens and the opposite of green is magenta so i added some magenta to the image added a bit of contrast reduce the highlights increase the shadows reduce my white and increased my blacks i didn't add blacks to the picture i actually took out blacks from the picture added some clarity and i reduced my saturation so the difference between vibrance and saturation um, I know a lot of videos have done some. I don't want to go much, go too much into it. So I like my colors as subtle as possible. I don't want it too out there where when you see the picture, you'll be like, oh, this image is too saturated. No, that's not what you're looking at. You're looking at a very subtle colored image where when you look at it, you feel, you feel, you, you literally feel the image. You feel the colors present in the image. No color is over the other and they all look or they all feel um, um on the same level so this is what i did in my basic tab in my tone curve i mentioned the cinematic grid feel right the cinematic grid feel um, always comes from this part trying to add some fade into your shadows this is what the cinematic grid. you're literally taking away some blacks from your shadows basically so if you look at the histogram you realize that um, the graph is far away from the blacks. This is the blacks of the image and this is the white of the image. When I took away white, now the histogram is definitely away from the white and it's also from the blacks. And I added contrast to each and every color available in the tone curve. So in my reds, I have this contrast as curve. I have the same thing in my greens and I have the same thing in my blues. So in all, this is what the tone care was doing in my image take a look at this taking a look at this you realize the the image is brownish enough for me this is even another 
color grade someone might take all i will do is to add um i think a bit of yellows into my midtones or let's see a bit of yellows into my um how should i put this into my shadows rather yeah so and by using that you can use a split toning to add yellows into it you realize that after i turned off the tone curve i have a bit of blacks in there so i can make it look differently using this alone but this wasn't what i was going for i was going in for this adding colors every way possible and with color grading in, um, in lightroom you have the hsl tab which i recommend everyone to get used to right so reducing the saturation here wasn't enough for me i came to do quite some reducing here too so basically this is what i did in my hue i changed the hue of my greens and my yellows um some and also in my reds my oranges purple and magenta reduce the saturation of the greens and yellows well, mostly the oranges too because i wanted to tone down the saturation of the oranges in the image reduce the reds the reds aren't really in the image because the image looks more brownish and with every skin there's there are reds and yellows in the skin and i have that available to me here as the orange luminance yeah basically this is what happens if you want to melanate your model you can reduce the luminance of the orange and bring it way down but the only downside is you are taking away the highlights of your image so yeah basically this is what i did in the um hsl tab or the color tab split toning wise i added some oranges into my shadow then this is what's in here so if i should turn this off you do realize the image now is in the ranges of um green it looks more greenish the shadows are tinted with green um the highlights green the midtones are more brownish because of the brownish nature but i wanted to add some reds right so you you guys realize that um i moved from step to another step to another step so the more i move from here to there to there i realize i need to do something else i saw this and i was like no i need some color i need some reddish color in the shadows and after adding it it changed the whole look for me right so this is how brownish uh, ended up being detail wise i normally take away my sharpness because i don't like a sharpened image in my post processing i want it to i want the skin to feel as natural as possible lens correction it's always advisable to enable profile lens correction if you're using a very wide lens but i use an 85 and i don't mind enabling it effects like i said if your image is blurred out you can add some grains to it and it creates a whole different feel it, it gives you the film like uh, um, view from when people used to use um these film cameras so that was what i was going on for for this image i didn't mind it's been blurred because i knew i could still work on it and now to the calibration so majority of the time people use the camera calibration to calibrate their images like if i should turn this off this is what i have in here if i should turn it back on this is what i have so you do realize it's a step-by-step -step, uh um, building of colors from basic to tone curve to hsl to split toning then to color um, um, camera calibration so basically this is what i did here in lightroom to move the image from this as i shot it in camera to this in lightroom then i retouched and edited it in photoshop for me for me to be able to post it so i'm happy you joined in on this video i'm glad i did this video because it has like as long overdue and it was quite requested and i didn't want to disappoint you people because you're yeah, the reason why we're doing this youtube so thank you for joining in don't forget to subscribe if you have not and turn on the bell notification icon because i'll be doing more similar shoots and kindly let me know down the comment section below if there's any concern to whatever it is i said here today maybe i said something wrongly maybe i said 
something that you didn't get or maybe whatever it is i'm saying is blasphemy just let me know down in the comment section below and i'll attend to you so i'll see you in my next youtube video peace